England and Argentina have named their teams for their Crunch Pool D match at the Velodrome in Marseille. And I was down there at the stadium earlier picking up my accreditation. And even though there was nobody about, and I, I just wandered around the stadium and I was, I don't know, even though there was nothing there and it was all in my head, there, there just felt an atmosphere. There's two massive games there this weekend, Scotland v South Africa, England v Argentina, both critical in their respective pools. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about the England-Argentina game with the teams in our hand here. Um, I'm currently just south of Marseille on, on the edge of the Colonks. Sounds made up, real word, real place. Very peaceful, very very lovely. You can see my van here. Um, oh yeah, look, 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 look at that hashtag. Some some bright spark came up with the idea. You, you know the, the, the classic French dish, coq au vin, chicken and wine. Um, I'm coca and this is my van, so coq au van, get it? We're in France. Um, so yes, <laughs> Let, yeah, let's get into the teams then, shall we? Right, so firstly, England. Um, and what stands out is Alex Mitchell is starting and Tom Curry is, as was rumoured, in the team. Both of the rumours have turned out to be absolutely accurate. Let's just, just talk about Alex Mitchell at Scrum Half for a second. He was not selected in the 33-man squad. An injury to Jack Van Portfleet meant he got called up. And now he is starting ahead of two guys who were picked ahead of him in the squad. Now, I, I'm really happy about that. I, I like Alex Mitchell. I've, uh, if you watch this channel, you know I've been calling for him to be England's starting scrum half for quite some time now. I'm hoping that means we're going to play with a bit more tempo, which is what Alex Mitchell does very, very well. And he likes to actually break the game up and run it and snipe and things. So I'm hoping we're going to see that. And the fact that Danny Kerr is backing him up suggests that that might well be what we're going to see. However, it, what, uh, it doesn't say a lot for the, the selection process and the strategy with England given that you've got a player who was effectively fourth choice who's now first choice and there's only one injury so that, that, that just looks like a team that's not quite sure but maybe and this is what I'm hoping maybe it looks like a team that is changing the way it plays just a little bit Tom Curry into the back row um, no Jack Willis in the back row, uh, not on the bench either. Lewis Ludlam is on the bench. Ben Earl gets the start at number eight. I, I like the balance of that back row. It is a risk, I think. You'd have to say it's a risk. Uh, Tom Curry coming straight into start, but Steve Warwick said he's been training really well. And also you've got Ben Earl who can slot into seven quite comfortably and Lewis Ludlam can play eight. So I think they're well covered there. I think it's a calculated risk, but one I quite like. The rest of the pack... Uh, in interesting to see Dan Cole starting. I think that's just a solid scrum is what they want. Um, and in the back line, Elliot Daly on the wing, Johnny May on the other wing, and Ollie Lawrence on the bench with Manu Tuolangi and Joe Marchand. I'd be really interested what you think of that starting team. I'm okay with it. I'm pretty, pretty happy now it's here. Um, I'm all right with that. Um, when we go over to Argentina, and I mean, there, there are some box office talents there. I do think there are weaknesses as well, much like with England. I think this is quite a good, well-matched side. Front row is, is fairly settled, albeit Argentina aren't quite the scrummaging force they once were. Uh, back row, Marcos Kremer back in the side. That's a big boost for them. Again, a bit like Tom Curry. Can he get can he hit the ground running and play well straight away? Uh, in, the, in, in the back line, centres has been one that Michael Checker has been chopping and changing around with. Chocobaras and Sinti. That looks quite a good centre partnership, but again, much like England, th it's been a bit up and down there and around and about and trying different people. And Emiliano Buffelli is in on the wing. Goal kicking option. I think goal kicks could be very important. So what I have done, and again, leave your comments, tell me what you think. What I have done is combine those two teams to create um, a 15. What would you do if you had access to all of the players that are going to be there in the game on Saturday night? And what would you do? Because that's what I've gone with. It doesn't make good reading for England. Only three forwards and three backs in the side. However, I would just draw your attention to the bench because except for Augustine Cre Crevy, I would pick the entire England bench. And I, f I do feel like Steve Borthwick's game is to try and keep things tight, controlled and, uh, and, and be in the game with 60 minutes. I think if England are in the game, they've got the firepower. Danny Kerr and Marcus Smith coming off the bench as a half-back partnership. I think that may be why Danny Kerr is on the bench, by the way, is so that they can come on as a duo. Um, and Ollie Lawrence as well. 
and Lewis Ludlam is just going to be a wrecking ball when he comes on. I like the look of England's bench. I think that could make a difference and it could swing the game in England's favour. However, I'm a little worried about uh, the battle up front. I, I mean, admittedly, some of those calls were kind of 50-50. A fit and firing Ollie Chesson playing like he did in the Six Nations and he might be in with a shout of ousting Thomas Lavanini. Tom Curry, when he's back to fitness and form, we, we, don't, we just don't know. He hasn't played in so long. Um, he might be in the back row and I have shifted Pablo Matera across uh, in place of Ben Earl there. So uh, I suppose that you could say it's pretty well balanced in the forwards. I think it's fairly well balanced in the backs. Albeit I do worry that Argentina might just have a little bit more firepower than England. But I think don't think England are going to play that kind of a game. I think England are going to play a tight game. And I think it will en actually end up being a pretty tight affair. I'm getting more and more confident in England the closer we get to it but I'm I'm just going to have to say my I think my prediction is nonetheless um a narrow Argentinian victory Argentina by 6 but I think more than anything because England can get out of the pool by beating Japan and Samoa and Chile uh, I think what I want is a performance and a cohesion and just something that we can corral around as England fans in the weeks ahead there's my thoughts on this game can't wait I'll be there and reporting from the match back for you so hit subscribe in this channel give it a thumbs up and uh, get stuck in nice